Hello guys, and welcome back to another Imp Creator tutorial. Today we're going to actually do a quick tutorial on the item tubes that have been voted in for Friday. So before we get started, I just want to point out something that I have set up on GitHub that makes it a little bit easier to do a couple of things. Now, a lot of the workspaces that I've recently done, and I'm slowly converting over the older workspaces, but a lot of them are uh, on GitHub now, so you can actually click on the any particular one. That wasn't really a good one to example, but uh, this one, for example, and you can actually download the workspace, the pro uh, procedures, and resources by clicking on the little uh, latest download thing. So a lot of the workspaces that I've done recently have been set up for this, and some of the other ones also have uh, older downloads on different pages as well. Uh, which are on the wiki page. So I just wanted to point that out. Also, if you have any feedback or want any particular um, tutorial done, you can also go to the feedback uh, thing that's pinned at the top of the screen right here, and then you can go to issues, and then it'll have a whole bunch of issues, uh, which are basically feature requests and stuff like that. And then you can also click on the new issue and then select a particular type of uh, request that you want to submit your um, tutorial request for either it be a update of a series update of a tutorial a new tutorial or a new series and depending on if I can fit it into one video it might become a series or a tutorial but outside of that um, it will be easier for me to manage the requests coming in and stuff so I'll be able to uh, add them to the um, what do you call it? The uh, project, which is under projects. And then I have a list of things that I basically need to work on here. And it just helps me basically keep things a little bit more organized uh, when I'm working on uh, creating tutorials and stuff like that. So it'll be a lot easier for managing. So now that we got that out of the way, let's hop into Minecraft and we'll take a quick look at the setup for the item tubes. So we're now in game and I have a couple of these blocks set up. These are item tubes and you can basically place them down like any other block. This little face right here basically indicates the direction that the tube will be going. So if we go like this and then kind of wrap it around, then what's going to happen is these tubes are going to push into this block and then that will start going this way and then we could even go this way a little bit. Now these, the system actually needs to work with loaded chunks. As uh, far as I know that it won't work um, in unloaded chunks, so this would be good around bases that are loaded. Um, I don't know if it works in spawn chunks uh, like most things do, so it does require some uh, more testing obviously, but um, it does work with chests and it does work with itself. We'll actually, in this tutorial, work on setting up a uh, device, maybe something like a dispenser. Uh, we'll see if we can't set up that. It requires nine slots, so we can probably figure out something like that. Why is there a random spider here? That's weird. Okay, um, yeah, so let's uh, quickly just put some items in here. And then this should filter through, if I had this facing the right way. Okay, so that should go through here, and now it's reached this part right here. So if we place down a chest, it will filter into the available slot for that particular chest. So if we go back over here, we can throw in maybe some uh, spruce planks, and then we'll throw in some oak planks, and then it should... Why? Oh yeah, that's why, because the, uh, the back just indicates that there's a... Um, slot there. So we should have uh, spruce and oak planks there. So if we go, we'll put in some more spruce planks and they should end up in our spruce plank section for that chest. So it fills it up to 64. And then we'll put the other one in and now this one is filled up to 64 as well. 
All right, so that's basically how it works. Now, I'm gonna quickly take a look at the number slots for the dispenser and see if I can not figure out what slot IDs we basically need for those. Uh, chests basically go from zero to um, 27, I think, so that was pretty easy to set up. But I need to quickly figure out what are the slots for dispenser, so just give me a minute. Uh, we'll go into M Crater as well. All right, so I'll make sure to link this site down here. It's uh, wiki.vg slash inventory, but basically what this uh, has is the a whole bunch of inventory IDs for the game. So I just scrolled down where it says dispenser, and I assume this would be the same for the dropper as well. So um, it starts at zero, and then it goes one, two, three, four, through to eight. So those are the IDs that we'll basically have to use in our tutorial. So that'll be good to go. All right, so what we need to do is uh, we obviously need our block first. So we're gonna have a block that has basically the rotation. So we can go north, east, south, west, up and down. And I've just used a solid block. You can basically have any textures that you want and uh, set up the particles and stuff. Uh, I've left the boundary box basically the same. I've configured it just a little bit so it's more like metal. And you can change the settings how you want on this page. Nothing's really required here. And then I've set the tick rate for one. This makes it go pretty fast through the system. So you can set that to that. And I've set the color on the map because the texture is kind of more like cyan. I've set it to kind of like a cyan color. And the other thing that you might want to do is basically uh, have the reaction to being pushed set to block so no items get dropped if the block is pushed with a piston or anything like that. There's a few different options but um, I've just set it to block so it can't be pushed. And then you want to enable the inventory, and then you want to enable, basically set up a GUI. Now the GUI is under the GUI tab. We have a item tube GUI, just a really simple, straightforward GUI. We have just a simple slot zero, and we've basically given a couple names for the inventory. That's all I've done here. So all I needed to do was set the slot for this particular block to one and it can support 64 that will allow extra overflow if needed uh, because it's going one, one per tick it'll probably never reach that amount but just be on the safe side I've also late enabled it so when the block is broken to basically drop the items and to enable comparator output output just in case someone wants to test if there's an item going through it or not and of course select your inventory uh, there is no energy or fluid storage so we can move on uh, the only procedure that is set up for this block is through update tick and uh, this basically tests for uh, the type of block that is in front of the block that it's basically pushing so i have only two blocks registered right now i have the one that is for the actual item tube and then I have one for a chest so you can basically configure this how you want if you want to add a new entry then you would basically click on the gear icon go to if else and then you would add the type of block that you want to add so we'll be doing that in just a second so I'm going to leave that tab up uh, for generation there is no generation so when you're finished with that you can just close that out Now I've covered this procedure, so basically what we're doing here is we're basically testing for the block's rotation, and then we're testing for the block in the location that is in front of the block. So uh, in this case, what I'm testing for is if the item tube is in front of the block facing north, or if it's a chest. So if you want to add different types of blocks with inventory, even uh, modded ones, you can basically add on to this particular one here and there is all six different directions set up for this particular procedure. So those other two procedures, uh, we have the one that's being called here, which is the item tube move item script, which basically is a script I've created for just this particular block. The other one down here is being called for chest. So let's take a look at the um, 
the one for the actual item tube itself. So if we go to item or back to our main menu and go to procedures, there's one right here for the basic item tube moving script. So again, I'm testing for all the different directions and in those directions I have basically set up the required stuff to move the items. So what's happening here is we're testing for the direction of the current block. And then what we're doing is we're testing for if there is items equal to zero in the inventory of the block in front of the current block. So in our case, this is if the block is facing north, then negative, uh, then north from this block, then what we're testing for is if the block has zero items. If that's true, then what we're going to do is we're going to basically uh, set the item from our current slot. So the slot that is in our current block, not the one that we're moving to. And then we're also going to set one of that particular item. So we're just pushing it over to the slot that's uh, north from this block. And then we're going to remove the item from the current inventory of the block that we're basically running the script from. If this is false, if there is an item in the inventory already, then what we're going to do is we're going to test if there is uh, a, the same item in the inventory as the current block. And then we're going to test if it is um, less than 60 Four. So basically what this will do is if it is uh, 63 or less, then it will basically uh, put the item in that particular slot so long as it's the same item type. I'm not sure how this would work with tools. I haven't tested that particularly, but it might bug out with that. In that case, you might want to specify certain item groups or something. Uh, so with that, uh, it's just doing the exact same thing here. It's just basically getting the item count of the next block and then we're adding one to that particular block. And that again does everything for every direction. So that's basically how that's set up. Uh, that's the gist of that particular procedure. There is the chest one, which is right above here, which is a little bit different, not too much, but uh, we'll be using this with the other particular, um, the dropper or dispenser or whatever we use it for. So what we're doing here is we're testing for the direction for the chest or the current block. And then what we're doing is we're setting a local MVT number uh, variable. Uh, we're setting it to zero. And then what we're going to do is run this, the amount of times that the slots have for the block that we're basically pushing into. So chests have 27 slots, and then what we have to do is basically uh, do the exact same procedure that we did before, only with a slight difference where it's running 27 times, and it's going to break out of the loop if it, um, if it basically runs this particular procedure so it can reset. And if it can't, basically what's going on is it's going to keep trying to find the slot and place the items in. And if it does manage to put the items in, then it's going to break out of the loop, which is the repeater here. And if it doesn't find the items, then what it's going to do is just keep increasing the slot ID plus one. So it'll basically eventually go through every slot of the inventory until it can find um, available slot or item that basically can support that um, support that uh, stack of items. So that's basically what's going on here. Uh, we'll use this particular procedure to set up our dispenser. So I'll quickly show you how to do that. So first thing what we need to do is we need to copy this script for the chest. And I'm going to go item, uh, tube and then we're going to go dispenser uh, move item script you can name it whatever you want but I'm going to keep it the same so it's easier to follow and then what we're going to go in here and we're going to just make sure that we can expand these and we're going to set the repeater number to nine and then we can basically 
just use the exact same script. So I'm just going to go to every repeater like this. And we're going to set that to 9 for every one of them. And what this will do is there's only nine slots in the particular dispenser. So they do use from zero to nine. So we only need to run it nine times. After we can just collapse all these particular repeaters and we should be good to go. So I'm just gonna collapse that, collapse this one and collapse that one. And then I'm gonna click save. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to go back into our main procedure where we're testing for the blocks. And then we're going to expand this and we're going to basically put that over into a new um, if else statement. We're going to copy this particular one for this um, the chest for the north and then we're going to select our dispenser. So we need to find the dispenser first and that should be somewhere a little bit further over here. Here we go. We got the dispenser right there. We're going to select that and then we're going to duplicate this particular uh, procedure for calling the procedure and then we're going to select our item tube for the dispenser one. So we're actually going to do this for every direction. So we need to do that. Clone this over. Whoop, I just added a comment. Duplicate and then we're going to select the dispenser again. And then we're going to move uh, we're just we can actually just duplicate this one right up here and we can move that down. And we have self to do place that down here and we'll select our block which is our dispenser and then we can move this one down so duplicate place that there and we only have three more to do so we'll just uh, duplicate that there we go dispenser oh that's our mod items so we'll select that one and then we'll move this one down and then we also have these other two ones that we need to do as well. So we'll just quickly do these. So like that, and we can move this down like so. And our last one, which is this one right here. So we're gonna duplicate again, and we're gonna select our dispenser. And then what we're going to do is basically move that procedure down like that. All right, so now we have support for our dispenser and we have support for chests and we also have support for the item tubes as well. So we can save that and we'll save this just to make sure that everything's up to date. And it's always a good idea to, uh, if you're about to go into the test environment to just regenerate the code, just to make sure that everything is working properly. And then we'll go into game and we'll test out the dispenser. So I got a simple system for the dispenser set up. So we have the dispenser here and we got some arrows. So I'm going to put the arrows in the back slot here and it should start shooting out the dispenser. So as you can see, it's, it does add it to the inventory. If we grab a couple more stacks, so we'll grab nine stacks and then we'll just uh, filter this in. And it should fill up the inventory for up to nine. So we'll just quickly put all these in. All right, so let's take a look at our dispenser. And as you can see, it's filled up to uh, the ninth slot. So that's basically how that all works. Uh, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and uh, the download for the workspace as well as the textures for the, the blocks and the um, procedure script as well will all be on the um, GitHub page under its own repository. So definitely check that out. Outside of that, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.